Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma Tu and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is the daily planetary translation for April the 3rd 2017 and today I'm going to start by reminding you that I have extended my flash sale of 50% off until April 5th at 12 midnight Pacific Standard Time. So go ahead and click on the show more button below. Look at my services, click on my calendar. All the prices listed there are full price. So at PayPal checkout, just deduct 50%. And we will be meeting together on Skype for a video conversation. And I will translate your chart for you. We could do the natal with progress to see exactly who you are right now and also we can do your draconic chart which is your oversoul so before you stepped into this physical vessel what was it that you had planned for yourself to accomplish in this lifetime and i am extending it because uh, i've taken a look at what's going on in the sky and it is hectic af okay um I believe that we never have to be a victim to the transits or to our chart, that we can beast mode and basically like man and woman power our way through some serious cosmic bullshit, right? And yesterday was basic ass biatch AF. And today is not that much better, I must say. But you know, it's all for a reason. You know, everything absolutely happens for a reason. And we need to remember this, okay? Because as we go through our lives, sometimes we're neglecting the intuitions that we're receiving from the cosmos and we don't want to pay attention. And so therefore, that's when the transits have to enact some serious lessons within our lives. So if you are doing the work of soul, if you're being mindful about what it is that you're doing here in this lifetime, and you're taking the steps towards your spiritual evolution and progress to get closer to the mission, then you know you're not going to feel this as much as other people will who just refuse to accept what the planets are trying to tell them right now. And so, you know, we talked about Mercury retrograde coming up and already in the shadow. We're in the intense part of the shadow of Mercury retrograde happening at four degrees of Taurus. And today, Mercury is at two degrees and 41 minutes. So we are getting close, close, close. And a mindful part about this, you know, I talked about more of the finance part about things yesterday, but in the astrological chart, Taurus rules the second house, okay? And a second house energy is always a representation of self-worth, Okay, so whenever we have planets in our second house, we do have some issues with self-worth. It's always amazing when a second house is clear, especially if it's unaspected from that eighth house. But, you know, really pay attention in your own chart. What do you have going on in the second house? And how is it playing out in reference to your own personal self-worth issues? Okay. Because anytime our self-worth is challenged, we are challenged, you know, challenged in every aspect. Because if we don't feel good about ourselves, if we're not in a proper place, then we can't manifest money and we can't manifest beauty and we can't manifest security. And Jupiter is retrograde in Libra, which is the law of attraction season, okay? This is all that deep internal work so that we can manifest the exterior into what we want to see. And you know, there these are two signs that are ruled by Venus. So Venus, love, money, and beauty, okay? What do we want to do to make this world a more beautiful place? Well, this beauty starts from within and it shines, you know, through our exterior and it illuminates those around us in the proper way. It gives us the freedom of self, the freedom of soul, and therefore we can actually manifest and create into this third dimensional matrix hologram a beautiful home, a beautiful relationship, a beautiful job, a beautiful security in life, okay? And a beautiful sense of self-worth. So this is going to be some serious lessons enacted. We have a grand T-square and a grand square. <laughs> so let us talk about this because um, 
or a grand cross and a grand square. Not sure what I said, but that's actually what I was trying to say is a grand square and a grand cross happening all at one mofo of a time. Like why, right? So I highly suggest that none of us fall victims to this shit today because it's going to be intense to say the least, all right? So let's talk about this. Today, the collective sun is at 14 degrees of Aries and it will be squaring the moon at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time specifically when the moon is at 14 degrees of cancer. And we all know that cancer has a case of the feels in its home sign that represents the emotional waters of the zodiac, you know? And water can become very balanced, but not all of us have the cancer moon natally. Not all of us have the practice that it takes. I mean, thank God we just went through this Pisces stellium. And so we have some more practice in dealing with a shit ton of water and emotional aspects. I mean, that's a positive, right? So apply what we learned in Pisces stellium season to this next um, couple of days, right? So the moon is also squaring Uranus. And Uranus is in Aries, so again, that rebellious self-authenticity and a square to our emotions and our intuition. The moon at 14 degrees of Cancer is then going to be squaring Jupiter retrograde. And as I mentioned yesterday, Jupiter has stepped backwards to 18 degrees of Libra. I am going to read the degree for that because it is so important for us to see what's going on. And then... Jupiter is, of course, still squaring Pluto. This is an aspect that's going to be happening for a good minute as well. And then Pluto is a squaring the sun and also squaring Uranus. So, OMG, we got so many squares going on. That's the squares, right? And then the oppositions are occurring, okay? The moon is going to be opposite Pluto today. Yay. <laughs> Pluto and Capricorn opposite Moon and Cancer. And as well, Jupiter retrograde is still opposing the Sun and Uranus and Aries. So, you know, this is a really big day for us to get into some serious, serious self-discussions about our self-worth. And Mercury going retrograde in Taurus is going to very much bring this to the surface. Don't forget that Venus did step backwards on the retrograde into Pisces once again. So we are fully at 29 degrees of Pisces today and um, conjuncting Chiron, our wound, okay? Uh, so overall, we are definitely going to be challenged. It's our inner world that's going to become an outward manifestation. So what is it that's challenging you inside? You know, again, yesterday I invited everybody to really go deep, go past the superficial, go past the judgments and the jealousy, and really find some jewels that are within the self that are still holding on that need to be released so that we aren't searching for that outside validation. And today, you know, I mean, Venus retrograde is really a time whenever we reassess and reevaluate our relationships with other people, okay? Because Venus is what gets us into these relationships. And um, relationships are very much Chiron wound activator. End of story. I mean, a lot of us have found ourselves in the repetitive cycle of the same relationship over and over and over. And usually the relationship will affect either our creativity um, our ability to be ourself, our ability to speak our truth, our ability to manifest money, um, the whole nine yards. You know, how much are we self-sacrificing and self-sabotaging? And this is all internal stuff, you know? And again, I want to remind everybody that, you know, getting into the brain frequencies today, you know, going into theta hypnosis is going to be a really useful tool. Continuing to do the hemi-syncing and meditation today might be just a very reflective day that you want to spend by yourself and not necessarily go out and... Um, getting some heavy stimulated conversations with others. You know, yesterday the big theme was really not defending yourself when others begin to attack you. 
okay? So now today the theme is switched to not defending yourself when you get in an argument with yourself, okay? Because again, Venus retrograde in the assessment of what we value and who we value, there becomes a lot of questions about are we in the right relationship? And not even just with other people, you know, not even just our intimate partnerships, but are we in the right relationship with ourselves? You know, do we treat ourselves? Do we take ourselves out for sushi? Do we treat ourselves to a movie? Do we treat ourselves to candlelight in the bath? You know, like what do we do for everyone else in this world that we never even consider to do for ourselves? Like today, a really powerful thing would be to take yourself and give all of that love that you spread outwards to yourself internally. Because again, damn man, I can't really express this enough on that Venus retrograde, Jupiter retrograde experience with, you know, Mercury in this shadow about to go retrograde and make us question our self-worth all the fuck over again. So remember that on this journey towards mastery of self, there are always things that can come back to bite you in the ass another day. And every day that that happens, it's just going to require that you are more and more honest with yourself and that you accept yourself more and more for the flaws as much as you do the beautiful aspects. Because you know what? One of the definitions of weird in the dictionary is supernatural. You know, so a lot of us have a long stemming issue of being called weird or odd or strange or crazy. And these are all things that make us question our own self-worth, right? So if we can understand that it's such a compliment, okay? Like everything that people have used to put you down in the past has been based off of their own jealousies and their own insecurities with themselves like people always project their shit onto the next person and that's what these squares this grand square this you know grand cross is all about you know what we do on the inside vomiting and projecting all over the outside and so this is really our opportunity to take it all into consideration and Oh, just vibe with it. You know, just accept that this is the planet's enacting change, absolute change. And sometimes, you know, sometimes when you really just aren't paying attention to what the universe is saying, like you have to get stripped down to your fucking bare bones and just beat the fuck into the ground so that you have no concept of self left so that what you build from here is a brand new version of everything built off of your like absolute done done with it done fucking fighting this internal battle you know what i mean i've said this so many times that there are plenty of people and experiences in this world that are set up to hold you back from the beginning so the last thing that you need to be is an opposition or square to yourself you know so i recommend you know really being your own best friend you know, stop being your own frenemy. And today's really going to expose those aspects of self where we are our own worst frenemies. You know, what is it that you constantly sabotage in your life? And where does that actually stem from? You know, cancer where the moon is transiting is about the past. You know, and cancer energy can really hold on to wounds of the past. You know, really not forgetting anything that someone has done to them to harm them. And so... A lot of times this is our self. So we really have to forgive some experiences of the past. The moon that's transiting here in Cancer is all about our intuition and our emotions. Okay, that's squaring our sun in Aries and Uranus. So there's two aspects in the sky that want us to just move forward and be who we are at all costs. And the emotions being in Cancer might just really be reflecting on everything that's hurt us before you know and because again venus is retrograde in pisces this is a you know in the mundane aspects of astrology and textbook astrology this is a very much a breakup time okay so relationships are being very much called into question 
for the point of revaluation, which you might be evaluating your relationship to not be worthy or um, acceptable anymore. Okay, so you might be making that decision or your partner might be making that decision. And if you're single, thank God, <laughs> right? But this is your time to reevaluate and process these past emotions as well so that whenever you do re-engage with a new relationship, it is brand new and it doesn't have that Chiron wound attached to it. Because so many times, you know, whenever we get into relationship, we merge with another and we forget that our point and purpose of this life is to continue to merge with creator source and to continue to remember that nothing is unchangeable and nothing is actually solid and whenever we could do that with our relationships and you know allow allow your relationships to have a breath of freedom to them you know like a lot of people really want to control their partners and own their partners you know because they are self um they're insecure so the self-worth question that's going to come up very heavy with this Mercury retrograde is going to seriously um, make us brand new in this aspect because if we can understand that whenever we go into control, um, control aspects of self over others, it's because we are insecure and we can't lie to ourselves anymore about this. So if you really want to be free yourself, you have to allow even your intimate partnerships, your husbands, your wives, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, you have to allow them the same amount of freedom. You have to allow them to be creatively expressive. You know, if you're a man out there and your girlfriend is a actress or a singer, you know, vice versa, and they need to go and tour, they need to go film, you know, they have kissing scenes, the you know, they're rocking stages and people admire them. These kind of things, you have to let your partner go out there and live their actual mission in this world and not try to hold them back. You know, because the square to Jupiter retrograde, you know, the square from Pluto and the square from the moon, oh, it's going to bring up some serious control freak issues in relationships because, you know, Jupiter... And Libra is an expansion of the Libra and energy. And Libra wants to be in relationships. Libra is that seventh house of the Zodiac that wants to be a part of someone else. That doesn't necessarily want to be an individual. They want to be merged with another human. And sometimes that's very unrealistic. You know, so that is what that square from the sun to Jupiter retrograde is really teaching us as well as the square to Pluto is how do we really not not force people into oneness with it, with us. We already are all one, okay? We are all part of the same fractal, the same source creator energy. There's nothing that actually separates you from me and you from your partner. So if we can understand this, then we can really be free in our own vibrations and, you know, not hold back our truth. You know, Libra doesn't want to always share their truth because they don't want to hurt the next person's feelings. That super self-sabotages them. And we all are guilty of this. You know, we're all experiencing this transit as a collective. And so none of us are exempt from these feelings. We've all, I mean, we're all in a flesh suit here. So we all know what this game is all about. And we just need to get to a part where as a collective, we are done playing these games. We're done self-sabotaging. We're done owning other people. We're done with just the manipulation. You know, everything that's wrong in this world is really based on manipulation. And so if we could really take it upon ourselves to take the ownership in our own lives, apply it to our relationships and release the ownership issues, find our self-worth that's not attached to anyone else, not attached to a relationship, not, you know, your identity should be you on a soul level, not I'm Joe's girlfriend or not, I'm Debbie's husband. You know, these sort of things, taking the self back, okay? To where, yes, I'm married, but I'm Maru, you know, that sort of thing. So remember that also the sun and Uranus are squaring Pluto. 
And this is going to give us that transformational energy. And of course, it's a challenge because it's coming from deep within. Pluto is the god of the underworld, okay? And Pluto's motto is transform now or die. So remember that Pluto's energy is ricocheting off of all of the, these aspects today and just ping-ponging his energy into each of these planetary aspects. So this is a Plutonian day for fucking sure, and Pluto does not play. So just remember that you're going to be receiving these messages on a very deep visceral soul cellular level, quantum biology level. So don't neglect what you're hearing. And also, you know, guess what? We have another square that's happening between Saturn and Sagittarius at 27 degrees of the galactic center and Venus. So Saturn is really challenging us to make real this new way of being. And again, Saturn at the galactic center is receiving a brand new upgraded operating system and we have been stuck in old dogmatic ways of operating, you know? So this is about freedom. This is about coming into a new place of acceptance. And so let's get into the degrees of the day. I am actually going to read the Sabian symbol for the sun at 14 degrees of Aries. A serpent coiling near a man and a woman. This symbol shows that there is likely to be a tense emotion, particularly around relationships. Oh my God. There can be a sense of tension, fear, and passion. Situations may arise where something or someone tries to come between you and your beloved. What? This can be a person, an event, or an emotion. Jealousy, temptation, fear, resentment, or separation can arise. You may need to learn to let go and find new depths to your ways of relating and relationships. Are you looking, are you looking for or have you found your Garden of Eden? Question mark. Enticement, allurement, the revelation of archetypal knowledge that may not be socially acceptable. Temptations, heated emotions, passion, kundalini energy. Like really, what the fuck? I really do love Sabian symbols for this reason. They nail the transits that are happening on the exact fucking day that they're happening. And I can't imagine that that would happen every single year, but we're really getting a treat this year, aren't we? I mean, I guess we'll just have to see. But shit, shit, tense emotions, particularly around, around relationships. This is... Cancer moon transiting, squaring Jupiter retrograde in Libra. <laughs> there is a sense of tension, fear and passion. And yeah, I mean, Mars and Taurus right now, right? That's our um, passions that is definitely, uh, you know, um, starting to be touched by this Mercury retrograde. It's not really going to touch it that much. The good news is, is that Mars today is in a sextile with the moon. So this is a positive energy, but it is going to stir us up and make us want some more passions and some more emerging. So <laughs> with all the other squares, that might not be too great. And also let us remember that we are having a very nice trine between Neptune and the moon. And again, that can actually make us a little too dreamy and overshoot for things, right? So um, don't have this, oh God, these tensions and fears and passions. Let us just breathe into all of these if they come up today. Situations may arise when something or someone tries to come in between you and a beloved. And this is so based off of jealousy and control. You know, do not be the manipulating force out there today. Do not try to show or flex your um, abilities to steal someone from another. And also don't be fearful of your love moving on because again, everything happens for a reason. And if someone could be stole from you, they were not worthy of you in the first place. And that is a blessing. That is a Pluto transformation that very, may very well occur from something like this. This can be a person or event or emotion, jealousy and temptation, fear, resentment, or separation can arise. Venus retrograde heading back into Pisces with this reassessment of who and what we value. I mean, I can't really even go that much further into this degree because we already just went over it for this entire explanation of the transits of the day. I mean, this grand cross, um, grand square, 
Oh my goodness gracious, it's pretty intense, right? Everything is again Pluto ping ponging off of one another. So no surprise here. You were looking for or have you have you found your Garden of Eden? And you know, as long as we're holding on to this idealistic sense that doesn't actually exist, we're always gonna continue to be disappointed, right? So check your ideals, check your um uh uh what are they called? Your um expectations, yes. Double check your expectations. See if they're realistic. See if they align in your partnerships. And if not, uh, have a conversation, which is not what Jupiter and Libra wants to do. They do not want to have the conversation. They don't want to get in a fight and possibly lose the relationship that in their head they're imagining to be one way. And in reality, it's not that fucking way. Reality check yourself here, okay? So enticement, allurement, the revelation of archetypal knowledge that may not be socially acceptable. And I've, I've actually talked a lot about this because whenever we're talking about this opposition to Jupiter and Libra from the sun degree in Aries, we're talking about getting real about what the archetype of Libra actually means. And Libra is blind justice, right? But it's really meant to be discernment of truth. You know, speak your truth, discern yourself, and also discern the truth of the people who are around you. Don't teach yourself the lessons the hard way. Like, really be secure in your own self-value that you deserve better, that you deserve to have what it is that you want in life. And uh, assuming that you're really doing the work, assuming that you're really worthy of this goodness. And if you're not, you know, then of course you're questioning your self-worth. Of course this Mercury retrograde is going to start to just pick on your fucking buttons. And they're going to be your buttons. So then in a turn you start to project these onto other people, making your shit their fault. And also remember, when people do this to you, that's what's happening on their level internally, okay? So you don't need to take it on and own it as yourself, as your own, okay? And you don't need to take it personally, which is going to be really a little bit difficult today, okay? So the temptated temptations, heated emotions, passions, and kundalini energy. Um, and all of these are very intense. Intense vibrations that can be tempered, that do request temperance. So let us just remember this. So the cautions are feeling guilty about being afraid to express your feelings. Libra, Jupiter retrograde, Sun, Aries opposition. That is that for sure. <laughs> so do not feel guilty and do not be afraid to speak your truth. Especially in your partnerships, especially the intimate ones, okay? Basic instincts and sexual energy, jealousy, using passion as a controlling device, being thrown out. <laughs> wow. How intense is that? You know, basic instincts and sexual energy, jealousy, using passions as a controlling device, being thrown out. You know, do not tempt people, do not tempt yourself on the superficial sexual experience. You know, you can't own anybody by the power of your, you know, nether reg regions. I was about to get super Scorpio son about that statement, but I'm going to restrain myself there. <laughs> and I do want to read the degree for, um, I'm actually going to flip over to the inside the degrees and read the degree for Jupiter retrograde that moved back to 18 degrees. This is the opposition to the sun degree that I just read. And as we see, it's really playing out, right? So Libra 18 degrees, a woman carefully counting the beans in a jar. Taking outward phenomena literally, the utmost in naive, naivety. You wander into every trap and pitfall with wide eyes wide open, wanting so badly for everything to add up and to make sense, lacking a strong center of selfhood, impressionable to received ideas and at the mercy of conditions, wanting only to please and to make everybody happy, you are held within the, psych, the circle of consensus agreement, behaving in such exemplatory fashion that it is too good to be true. All is from the outside in. Lessons in outlasting what you take on and in showing up after being so far gone that nobody knew where to find you. <laughs> 
so interesting right because taking outward phenomena literally is like whenever you experience people's um i mean take it just really take an outside look okay everything that i talked about with these transits are going to be a breeze for someone who is in a state of self-mastery but is going to be shit tired crazy for all of those who live a mundane fucking life which is 95 percent of the damn population is it not if more so people are going to be tripping today you might be totally a-ok -okay, not feeling any of this energy but the people around you are just gonna go cray cray so you know don't take the outward phenomena literally as an application of you because people may very well be enticed to attack your character your selfhood today right so the utmost in naive naivety and <laughs> Libra can be very naive, okay? This is Jupiter retrograde in, in Libra, and this is a Libra degree. Libra wants to believe the best, and so they ignore the truth, okay? That's what that's saying. It's the utmost in that is sometimes. So you wander into every trap and pitfall with eyes wide open, wanting so badly for everything to add up and make sense. And you know, you can't lie to yourself and force it to be true, and this is just such a statement of that. You know, when you enter into something eyes wide open, it's because you've already discerned that this experience that you're going into is shit, but you're going to do it anyways. And you're just wishfully thinking that everything's going to add up to your way. And it doesn't always add up to your way because you're not taking the fullness into consideration. So this is a huge aspect, a huge aspect, lacking the center of selfhood, lacking a center of selfhood. Huh, this is everything that we've been talking about. So really getting that in check. Again, do the frequencies. 432 um, hertz, 432 hertz. Removing the negative blocks and the negative energies is going to be a really good one to play today. If you can also find a blend that's blended with 632 hertz, that's going to be fantastic because that's actually a relationship healing frequency. Blend them with some theta brain waves and really use it to your advantage. Pull out all your tools in your self-help um, experience if you come up into any of these things today because it's going to be interesting. Impressionable to received ideas and at the mercy of conditioning, wanting only to please and to make everybody happy, you are held within the cycle of consensus agreement, which is the bumbleclat, rasklat, dogmatic bullshit way that they've told us we need to be remember weird supernatural that's what we are don't go into this you know have to get go grow up and go to college and, and fucking get married and have kids and fucking all that shit and be married to one person for your entire lifetime because you got married i mean uh, the impressionable society rules that have been placed on us are heavy and pluto and capricorn is destroying this foundation and this structure and again it is squaring the sun and it is squaring jupiter jupiter and the sun are opposing each other don't forget how this is playing out and then both of those energies are squaring the moon <laughs> and opposing pluto <laughs> oh god so, behaving in such exemplatory fashion that it is too good to be true. I've been telling you guys this, that people see straight through your shit. So, do not fake it. You know, don't show people what you think they want to see. And Libra as an archetype is so guilty of this. You know, Libra wants, they don't, they're not truthful in all aspects because they're telling people what they think they want to hear instead of what the truth actually fucking is. Okay, they'll sit there and tell someone all day. Yeah, I love you. Yeah, I'm happy in this relationship Meanwhile, they want to fucking slit their damn wrist because they fucking hate you and they hate their relationship Oh Goodness gracious Libra, I've been begging you to get your shit together on this self-identity for such a long time And you know, it's hard. It's hard with Pluto fucking destroying you right now And it's hard with Jupiter expanding all of this re-evaluation of shit it's not an easy aspect to be facing right now if you are a libra sun moon or rising or if you have a stellium in libra not easy focus on your progress chart and see what that's really telling you if you are a libra uh very heavy 
Um, very, very heavy shit that is going on with you guys right now and you need to pay attention to it. The progress chart is really gonna shine some light. Do the draconic chart so you can really see what that oversoul is really up to because it's all divine, it's all meant to be. It's just really not that easy to do whenever you got this flesh suit full of fucking emotions attached to it. All right? So, um, all is from the outside in or from, yeah, from the outside in. Lessons in outsta outlasting what you take on and showing up after being so far gone that nobody knows where to find you. And sometimes you just got to get so fucking lost that you actually find yourself. You know what I mean? So this is a time when all of our masks really need to come off. I mean, this week has been such a brutal slap in the face about being real. Um, first with the self, second with others. And whenever we really do this, of course there's going to be some movement, some, some drastic changes. And it's really going to play out through our relationships. Our relationships, for sure. So I wish you all a beautiful day. Please take advantage of my 50% off sale that I have extended to the 5th. It's for this reason right here. You know what I mean? I am one of those people that I don't feel the transit's the same um, because I just don't let myself go back into past patterns because I've, I'm, I'm sick. I, I, I won't. You know what I mean? I don't reopen my wounds. And I'm here to help all of you remember that it's all what we have decided for ourselves, how much are we willing to take and how much are we willing to give? You know, we have to know who we are in order to have our boundaries intact and not be taken advantage of and not be fooled by yourself or others. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow and I wish you all the best day ever. Hang on fucking tight for this one, okay? God bless. To me. Absorb my life. Close your eyes Can you hear my voice?